This isn't a haircut, by the way. I wore a hat today and it matted down. It'll be fixed in the next one. So all of you have been very, very generous with your support in me thinking that iOS is better than Android, which is a very unpopular opinion. However, we got a ton of likes on that giant video I've worked on. It's my end of the year project. I'm sure we're gonna have another big end of the year project at the end of 2017. But I don't think it's fair to just say that everything about Android is terrible and that there's nothing you can get out of it. Not even the Apple sheet believes that. There are quite a few things I like about Android. Not a whole lot, but there's some things that iOS can't do that I love in Android. So I figured, to be fair, let's elaborate on some of those great features that iPhones can't do. And don't worry, I'll be brief. Knock knock. I think the ability for a phone to understand that you're tapping the display, even when the phone is off, is really important and intuitive. So you're like, hey, phone, wake up, and you tap on the screen twice, and that's how you access the lock screen or the home screen or whatever. That I got really used to on my Android phones in the past. I think that's incredibly intuitive and simple to understand. It makes me jealous. I wish I could do that, and I can't. Number two, face chat bubbles. Of course, I've elaborated how great these are in the past, and my arguments still stands. Basically, if you're ever multitasking on a phone, most of the time it's because you're texting someone while browsing the internet or watching a video, and face chat bubbles make it so easy to go back to a conversation. You just put the face of whoever you're talking to in a little bubble. You can put them anywhere on the corners of the screen so it stays out of the way, and you just tap on it, and it opens up a conversation. And you just reply really quick and then hide it, or just read whatever that text is, and you're good. That's so much better than switching between apps like you have to do on iOS. Really hope that makes it into iOS 11 in one way or another. And of course, when you're done with that conversation, you just hold it under a little X at the bottom of the display, and it's gone. It's so easy, it makes so much sense, makes me really love that part of an Android. Number three, I like how Samsung phones, and I believe a few other phones have like little indicator lights at the top to let you know a few things about your phone, whether you have a text or a call that's pending, like a notification, or sometimes when you're charging, it'll let you know that you're fully charged, or at the end of the day, it'll let you know if you have a low battery. I think that's a really simple and intuitive way of letting the user know things even when they're not even touching the phone. You can just look at it and understand understand something just by that little color and that little dot. I can understand though why Apple doesn't want to put that on the iPhone. It does kind of complicate the front of the device a little bit. And of course, this is relying on the fact that the user has to understand this beforehand. If you didn't know what those lights meant, then it would be confusing. And it's another thing to learn on top of that first impression like I talked about before. Apple loves that front of their phone to look very sleek and minimalistic and adding extra dots to that would be a little annoying for them. And it might make the next iPhone look a little less pretty. So I wouldn't expect it to be on the iPhone 8, but I do think that's a really handy feature. It reminds me of the red dot on my Apple Watch I get whenever there's a notification I haven't viewed. I can just look and say, oh hey, there's something there, and then check it real quick. Plain and simple. It's a good feature. Number four is modules, like on the Moto Z and the LG G5. See, with Android phones, there's a few really brave brands out there that are willing to do something very new with their phone, which is either slap a case on the back of it with some pins that line up that add more functionality to the device, or with phones like the LG G5, you can take out quite a large chunk of the inside of it, like the battery, and then replace it with an extra feature, whether it be a camera or a bigger battery or something. I think Moto Z does this even cooler because it has those pins and you just slap it on the phone like it's a case. Don't even think about it. And with that, you can add an external speaker that gets really loud. You can have a digital camera with zoom. Of course, add extra battery life, all kinds of things. Now, unfortunately, not a lot of users are flocking to these brands, even though I think they're really cool. But I think the idea of it is still really great. So if Apple decides to go through with an iPhone Pro, and they put that smart connector on the back, we could get some really cool accessories to go with our iPhone that I think could do all kinds of different things, whether it be expand your battery, sure, that's already been done. But I always wonder why you can't get a case that expands the storage of your iPhone. Say you can't afford the 256 gig phone right now, you can only afford the 32 gig version, but later on, you buy that 100 to $150 case and now you have 256. Or if you're really rich, you could have even a terabyte in your pocket. Or even add, of course, a camera with an actual optical zoom. Unfortunately, the module that does that with the Moto Z is not very good at it because the sensor is not that great. But if I feel like that idea was given to Apple, they would kind of perfect it. And of course it would be pricey, but bottom line is Apple hasn't done that yet. And I applaud Moto Z and LG G5 for being unique. Number five is a very simple feature that makes a big impact when I'm using my phones. Taptic feedback when you're typing on the keyboard. I don't know why, it's just one of those things that I really thought was cool. Whenever I'm typing on an Android phone, I like to turn on the vibrate whenever I touch a key. iPhones still don't do that, which I think it would be great if they did because they have great Taptic engines inside them. So it would feel very natural and fluid. So I don't know why Apple against it, but it's a point I just have to give to Android. It's cool, and it makes the phone feel kind of playful, like it understands you better. It's kind of hard to explain, but I feel like the iPhones should do that. Even if it docks the battery life, I'd be okay with it. Number six is rapid charging. That's it. I don't really need to explain anything. Android phones, some of them have rapid charging. They charge really fast. That's cool. I would like that. Number seven, of course, was the one you were thinking of the whole time. Customization. Yes. As I said in my documentary, that's important and it's cool, but I'm afraid a lot of people don't do it right, 
and it makes the handoff effect confusing to people who don't know what your phone is. When you customize it to your liking and you give it to someone else, they get really confused. However, customization does have that bonus of, man, I can really change everything. When I had my Android devices, I loved being able to edit every single app icon and getting theme packs. One thing you can't do on iOS that I love to do on my Androids was get rid of the text underneath your app icons. It made things way more minimalistic and it's like, come on guys, we can tell by the look of the app what it is. We don't need Facebook written under Facebook all the time. We get that. So we just kind of remove the text and everything's a lot more simple. Number eight is manual mode in the camera apps. On just about every Android phone I've had, you could manually change every little thing in the camera and that's something you can't do in iOS. The iOS says, we know what you want. And as a videographer and a photographer, I kind of like to get specific and it's really cool that Android lets you tinker every little feature about the sensor. Whether you want the shutter speed high or the ISO low, any number of those things, it's nice that that's an option on Android. Okay, okay, that's enough. You're not getting any more. I've endorsed them way too much today. This is a one-time thing. For all you people saying I'm running out of ideas, you're prob probably right. But that's okay, because I'm funny and you like watching, right? You do. Please say yes. You're not saying yes. Okay, well, that's fine. Whatever, whatever. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I will see you in the next one.